It's my pleasure to welcome Michael Luria, the head of land maneuver systems at Rafael, for a conversation with Jerusalem Report editor Steve Lindy. Mickey Lurie, VP and Head of Land Maneuver Systems at Rafael, welcome. Thank you. Tell us about the trophy system that you have developed and how it represents a game changer. Okay. I'd like to start by looking at it from the soldier's point of view, okay? We have soldiers, four in a tank or living in an APC, sitting inside a metal box, not really aware of what's going on around them. There's a lot of noise, a lot of bumps, and there's one thing they know for sure. There's an enemy out there that, does, that wants to do them harm, okay? Now, the threat they're facing is something that is not very big. It's shaped this way, okay? About this wide, this long, and it moves at about 1,000 kilometers per hour. So from the minute it's shot until it hits them, it's almost no time. They won't see it coming and the results will not be in their favor. That's the way a soldier thought before trophy. Okay? That's how he felt during the 2006 Lebanon war. Okay? And trophy changed that. Trophy is a system that detects that missile when it is launched. Okay? It tracks it. It tells a soldier incoming missile be ready. And then it attacks the missile and destroys it before it reaches the tank. So that's trophy in a nutshell. It simply saves lives of soldiers. Tell me some of the challenges you had in developing the system. Okay. The, as, as I said, the incoming threat is coming at about a thousand kilometers per hour. You need to detect it. You need to look at it and, and keep pace of the, of the threat, decide exactly when you want to intercept it, and then you have to hit it precisely at its head, okay? You need to, in order to, to really get it out of the game. And all this needs very, very high precision, a, a lot of computing, a lot of detection, a lot of algorithms that were developed in Rafael for quite a long time before the system was, became deployed, mm -hmm. and especially between the time of 2006 and 2010. So let's talk about the uh, Operation Protective Edge, the war against Hamas mm -hmm. in Gaza, and that's when it really proved itself. Right. So I, I want to I take a few steps back, okay? Mm -hmm. In 2006, in the Lebanon war, we, don't, we didn't have any kind of, of answer to the, to the missiles. So at the end of the war, Rafael, took on itself to develop this system. We had a prototype, something very initial, and we decided to move ahead very rapidly. And within about two to three year, uh, years, we got it from a prototype to a combat proven system. It was deployed on tanks in 2010, and in 2011, one year later, that's it, it already saw action. And we have a, 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 the, the movie uh, and, and uh, the recordings of the tanks crew when the first missile was shot at a tank with a, a trophy system and the soldiers are just talking, idling in the tank. They're talking about this guy walking a, a, a next to a mosque and they're saying, what is he doing? And then in no time, there's a boom and, and, and the soldiers say, what just happened? Wow, we were shot at and we would be dead if not for the trophy, okay? So that was the first time trophy really saw combat action. Then we had several more occasions, but the real big thing was in Protective Edge 2014, uh, when we had quite a lot of incidents in which both in urban terrain and outside of the towns, missiles were shot at tanks and the trophy system worked. It's not only that it worked against the threats, it never, it worked without a threat. So it only works when it's required and it does not work when it's not required, which is also a very big deal. And it represented such a military innovation that you have in fact sold it to the U.S. Army. Yes, yes. We've sold four uh, brigades worth of trophy systems to the U.S. Army. Uh, we're finishing the delivery of these systems 
in about two months, they'll have four brigades of trophy systems in the U.S. And I think it's a great achievement. It, it, it comes to show because the, the U.S. Army tested it any which way possible, okay? In all kinds of weathers, in all kinds of terrains, any kind of scenario possible, they tested the system. Of course, we, with the IDF, with the IDF tested it in, in real combat situations, so we have also that. But, but again, there's a lot to say about real testing, and, and I think that today, both the Israeli military, the US military, and Rafael uh, know that this system is proven and it works as it has to, and it'll save lives. It has saved, and it'll save in the future. And in fact, uh, you've also received a certificate of appreciation of recognition from the U.S. for saving lives. Right, right. That was not for the trophy. That was the, the, the generation before we provided. The, we're in this protection business for a long time. Uh, initially, we developed and produced a passive and reactive armor, and we sold it to the IDF first, and also then to the U.S. military. That was about 15 to 20 years ago, and through the different uh, wars they had in the 1990s and the beginning of the 2000 year in, in Afghanistan and Iraq, uh, this uh, protection uh, saved a lot of American lives, and we received certificates of appreciation, several of them, from the U.S. Army saying that, that we saved them. But this kind of protection is good against certain missiles, the newer missiles, the more advanced ones, it's not good enough against them. That's why we developed the trophy. We went to the next generation of protection system against the, next, the, the newer generation of missiles. And have other countries expressed interest in the trophy? Yes. We have, a, at this point, three more customers, three more countries, two of them Europeans and one outside of Europe that are in the process of purchasing uh, the trophy system. I can't talk about the specific countries at this point because they do not want this uh, 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 talked about or, or told, and, but, but they are in the process and uh, I think that more countries are to come. Um, this uh, discussion is about military innovation um, and how certain situations give rise to new technologies. Uh, we call them disruptive technologies. How has Trophy contributed to the bigger picture when it comes to military innovation? Okay, so in three aspects. One is defending the soldiers, okay? After this incident in 2011, the CEO of Rafael received a phone call from the mother of one of the soldiers, saying thank you for saving her child's life. It gives the soldier a lot of security. It gives the soldier a sense they can fight and someone's defending them, so that's one thing. The second thing is the trophy system, as I said, detects the missile, but not only the missile. It detects the shooter. It detects the origin from which the, the missile came from. And by that, enabling the crew to shoot the guy who's shooting them. And that way, the guy who's hunting them becomes the hunted one, okay? So you're not only passively defending yourself, you're attacking your enemy. So that's the second thing, so you have your enemy on the run. And the third thing, because every trophy system out there has this radar that says where someone's shooting from, it enhances the situational awareness of, of, of the group of tanks, of the battalion, of the brigade, thus enabling the commander to better maneuver in hostile terrains, in urban terrains, hostile terrains, wherever. And I think that during Protective Edge, uh, one of the uh, brigade commanders of the IDF talked to that and, and said, this is a game changer. It enables me to maneuver in terrains, in areas that I would not dare because they were too dangerous before, and I can do it safely. And briefly, final question, what is your vision for the future for Trophy? Wow. Uh, first of all, we're going to uh, improve it and bring new capabilities all the time, okay? Because it's something that moves, you know, we make the trophy system, they make better missiles. We make the system better. And uh, I have two sons that were in the military. One of them was, in, was, in, was a paratrooper, second one was in a special unit. And I have a third ch son that's going into the military in November. Uh, I want them protected. It's, I have a personal investment in this. I want them protected. Like all my friends in Rafael, they want their children protected. So uh, we're going to do the best we can 
to provide the IDF the best protection system we can so that our children will be out of harm's way. Mickey Lurie, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.